to the commander of the Second Army. Your appointment replacing General Pétain is long overdue. Congratulations, General Nivelle. <laughs> discretion, mon cher, discretion. The good general will be joining us. The problem with the good general is that he has a conscience. Greetings, Pétain. Mon cher. Nivelle. You're cheerful today. We are at war. War raises a soldier's spirit. Does it? What would give you happiness, General? The safe return of our men and an end to this madness. We are going to retake Fort Wilmore. We attack here. The north side. We attacked the north side three weeks ago. What is the purpose of the new attack? Purpose? The men will be rushing into machine guns and artillery uphill. One would hope that you have a purpose in mind. Sir, Commander-in-Chief Joff. That is, gentlemen. I don't have much time. I'm expected at the ballet. Politicians, you understand? The reason I'm here is to discuss the problem with our communication network. General Shaw. Don't protest, General. Your telephone lines have been destroyed by German shells, and your couriers are infiltrated with German spies. I've dealt with the problem, General. New couriers. Belgians. Belgians? They are an inferior lot. Can you depend on them? Why don't we see what they can do? I'd like to send someone with an order to attack Fort Wormont. Fort Wormont. An attack on the north side. I have no objection. I will await the results. Monsieur le Maréchal. Yes, General? You can't authorize another attack from this position. I just have. Just like that. An attack of this magnitude must be planned to the last detail. This is not a recommendation. I insist upon it. You insist? I expect your support, General. Thank you, General. I'll start the artillery barrage immediately. Dispatch to the front, Major. Give it to one of the new Belgian couriers. You were chosen to replace Peter because you are not reluctant to attack. Don't let me down, Nivel. Succeed at all cost. Who's the fastest of the Belgians? It's a new one. Him. Rides like the wind. Corporal! Bunker. 
Yes, Major. That's right. Not in a week. Not in two weeks. Tonight or tomorrow. My men need new boots. At ease, Corporal. From Second Army Command, sir. Oh, no. to the trenches is down. Are you a fast runner, Corporal? Yes, sir. What's happening, sir? The guns you hear are ours. The attack must begin when those guns stop firing and the enemy will have time to recover. If the enemy has time to recover, they will slaughter my men. Do you understand me? Yes, sir. Report to Major Gaston. You've got to get there before the artillery stops. Mark, sir. Mother of God. Not again. The guns have stopped! We should attack at once! Her name is Nicole. She lives in Marseille. This is her picture. The address is there. Take this to her. Hold on. I can't take it.
How many? Approximately 600. Confirm that. Take this back to headquarters. That figure will go up. Welcome to Verdun, Corporal. From sector four, sir. Go then. You're dirty. Clean up and get downstairs. You'll miss your supper. Yes, indeed, General. <laughs> the report of Franz Sector 4, sir. How much ground was gained? None, sir. What's that, Major? I thought you said none. I did, sir. Tell Colonel Bach to have himself in my office at 6 a.m. That will be all, Major. Yes, sir. How many men did you lose? Obviously not enough. Leaving, General? The main course hasn't arrived. I've had enough. I'm expecting you later, General. I'd like your contribution. So I hear you enter the front. Yeah. Not so nice, is it? No. This is an ugly war. At least not the word for it. Truth is, I still can't figure out what this war is about. Nobody knows what it's about. It's simple. The Germans invaded Belgium. Your homeland. So they could invade France, your homeland. What about Russia? Don't forget Britain. They're on our side. <sighs> Look. France is on the left. Russia is on the right. The sausage is Germany, okay? Now, this is Austria. The potato is Belgium, and the beer is Britain. Here, we have Serbia. Now, when the Archduke of Austria is assassinated in Serbia, Austria threatens to invade Serbia. What about Germany? Germany, as an ally of Austria, declares war on Russia, an ally of Serbia. But we're fighting in France. Yes, indeed we are. France declares war to Germany and Austria because of their alliance with Russia. What about Belgium? Ah. Belgium. When Germany went to attack France, Belgium wasn't on the way. And Britain didn't like that, so they joined against Germany and Austria. Right. So we're fighting to protect Serbia, a tiny country no one's ever heard of. That's what this war's all about? Dear Ned, interested to hear of your struggles against the Turks and Germans in the Middle East. I'm at a place called Verdun. 
This trench warfare is hell. The men either run straight into machine gun fire or wait for the next artillery barrage to drop on them. They're like animals being led to slaughter, and I can't understand. I can't understand why. It's still in there. It is not still in there. I can feel it. You have to operate again. Private, control yourself. Restrain him. Bow, bow, bow! Stop. He's a danger to himself and others. No, he's not. Let me talk to him. Better, my friend. Yes. Is that a German? Who did you? One of the prisoners. I traded some chocolate. You're a genius. Did the surgeon really leave it in? Remy. Remy? trenches that send me back if I feel well so I'm not going to feel well I'm not going when you listen to it, you have to let it heal if you make it worse they'll find out and you'll end up in front of a firing squad a food this in charge and a charge
here for the ammunition order? Yeah, a couple of things. Corporal Henry Defense. I'm Sergeant Jean de Mille from Cannes. You're Belgian, huh? It's all right. I won't hold it against you. Glad to make your acquaintance. Do you know anything about guns? Every healthy young man loves guns. Hey, come on. Yeah, a rail-mounted 320-millimeter howitzer. Fires a 100-pound shell. Can reduce your average German infantryman to a quivering pile of mince Wiener schnitzel in half a second. <laughs> but it's nothing compared to the big one. The what? The big one? Yeah. Big Bertha. Who's Big Bertha? <laughs> Not who. What? The Krupp howitzer. He's German. Meanest cannon ever made. It takes over a hundred men to load and fire it. <sighs> and she fires a 2,000 pound shell. 2,000 pounds? Yep. Enough TNT to blow this place to the moon. Here you go, Corporal. Do the Germans have big berthas here? No, 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 no. Might someday, and then. <laughs> See you later, Sergeant. Bye, Rocco, Alex. As I was saying, we have a specific need for men who speak German. Do any of you speak German? I thought Belgians had a reputation for language skills. I repeat, do any of you speak German? Uh, I speak German, sir. It's called Bold Defense, isn't it? Yes, sir. Be in my office in two hours. Why did you tell him you speak German? Because he asked. And because I do. Why, what's the problem? They just need an interpreter. You've got a lot to learn, my young friend. Ich habe mich in London gemeldet und sah die Aktion im Norden. Obwohl ich als Korporal in der Belgischen Armee diene, freue ich mich sehr, dass ich unter der französischen Kommandatur eingeheit bin, Es ist mein Pflicht, der französischen Armee die Deutschen auszutreiben zu helfen. That's ich enough. You and Boston, Corporal. Your accent is excellent. Thanks. It's noble for you to volunteer for this. French army will be indebted to you. Indeed, entire French people will be indebted to you. Are you sure you want to do this? I guess so. What is it you want me to do anyway? Hundred and fifty meters across. Stay low, don't be seen. Find the command bunker and listen for anything about troop movements or attacks. Right? Call for one other thing. Germans don't take spies alive.
shot in the legs and stomach. I can't walk. How long have you been here? Oh, yesterday, I had a visitor, but I took care of him. I'll get you out. Don't leave me. I'll be back. I promise. What the hell is it doing? Oder über ihre Dummheit lachen. Hast du das gehört? Kamerad! Feldwebel! Schauen Sie mal raus, was da draußen passiert. Jawohl. Ah. Aufpassen. Sag. Stimmt das mit den Kanonen? Du, mein Schwager hat gestern Abend im Casino zwei Generale plaudern gehört. Kanonen kommen heute Abend an. Morgen sollen wir der französischen Armee zwei schöne deutsche Mädchen vorstellen. Und die heißen die Gilberta! Big Bird. How did it go? The Germans are bringing up artillery, sir. I don't need a spy to tell me that, Corporal. You better listen to him, Colonel. They're bringing up two big berthas. What? Come with me right now. Are you certain of what you heard? Yes. No exaggeration? No. I mean, no, sir. They're repeating the same story three times. Why would he lie? I didn't say he lied. I asked if he exaggerated. Corporal Defense, you are a Belgian, hmm? Yes, sir. And you were recruited for this mission when? Yesterday. I recruited him, sir. I am not talking to you, Colonel. You realize that traitors are shot, Corporal? Yes, sir. It's ridiculous. It's clear he's telling the truth. I am ordering a 
the new attack. You don't mean that? Yes, General Peter. I do. You're not even going to investigate this? Two big howitzers, out of the blue. Why would the Germans do it? Why now? It is inconceivable. I am not going to waste my time. General, with all due respect... With all due respect to you, Colonel, I am ordering you to return to the front and prepare for an attack on Fort Douaumont. I am sick of your whining. That will be all. And get a haircut! You will excuse me. I have a breakfast engagement. You may not have time to verify the boy's report, but I do. If those guns are there and the men attack, they will be cut to ribbons in five minutes. You can put that in your report, General. Troops going back to the front. Hello, indeed. Off to the front again. About the other day at the hospital. Thank you. What for? Cigarettes. <laughs> What's going on? I don't know. Something built up. All your bearer men got orders. I have to go. Remy. The pictures are clear. These are Krupp Howitzers, 2,000 pound shells. That will be all, Major. Aerial reconnaissance is my province, General. I can order air reconnaissance when I think it necessary. In this case, I thought it was. I believe new orders are needed. For what? To cancel the attack, of course. You are going to cancel the attack? We've already begun our bombardment. What? Call it off. Cancel the attack. I have orders to attack. Nivel, with those guns there, our men have no chance of success. The casualties will be 90%. If you let this attack go, knowing those guns are there, you are committing murder. You do it then. You call off the attack. Send in Major Murrah. Take this to the front immediately. Yes, sir. like the shelling stopped. It sounds like the shelling stopped, Nivelle. 
Yes, it did, sir. It's not time for the attack yet. No, sir. Then why are not the cannons firing? The attack must be supported by theory. Yes, I understand that. The reason why is because I ordered them to stop. I also ordered the attack to be cancelled. You did what? I cancelled the attack. Nivel, you're the commander of the second army. Did you agree to this? I... Well, uh, yes. Your office now. I'm not interested in excuses, Nivel. Ordered an attack, I want an attack. Get me Colonel Bark. Colonel Bark. This is General Joffre. I order you to resume the attack. I won't, sir. What? I won't because I can't. I'm the commander in chief of the army. I'm giving you a direct order. And I am staring at an order canceling the attack. A written order signed by General Pétain. A written order can be changed only by another written order. If you really are commander in chief of you don't understand what you wrote that regulation. I want you to prepare for an attack. A written countermand, signed by me, will be arriving immediately. Take this to Major Gaston. Tell him not to prepare for an attack, but wait until I give further orders. Take these to the sector four as fast as you can. They've ordered the attack to continue. But the big guns, they can't. Unfortunately, Corporal, they damn well can. I don't care about your reconnaissance, General. What possible military objective will be gained by this? There are bigger issues than this attack involved. You could hardly understand. Fort Tourmont is a symbol of national pride. The public was shaken when the enemy captured it. When the public is shaken, the politicians have a problem. When the politicians have a problem, I have a problem. Is that clear enough for you? It's all too clear, General. from command arrive. Not yet.
can't believe you actually did that. You could have ended up in front of a firing squad. They'll never figure it out. But still, you lost your career job, and you put yourself back in the mud. You're crazy. It seemed like a good idea at the time. A few men got to live another day. You are living in a chateau, warm, dry, close to so much good food, close to so many beautiful women in the village. Not in that village. No, the real women are in Paris, Remy. Paris. Don't talk about it. What wouldn't I give to be in Paris now? Well, we may be there soon. Don't be stupid. No, I mean it. I just got a letter from a friend of my father's, and he may be able to get us a furlough to Paris. I believe that. I believe that. When I have a beautiful, soft, blunt little mademoiselle on my lap and two more on each arm. Indy, you're a genius. I still don't understand how you did that. My father's old classmate is a professor at the Sorbonne, and a personal friend of the Minister of War, so I guess he pulled a few strings. Brilliant! Uh, brilliant with a catch. He also has a message for me from my father. That can be too difficult to deal with. It's the first contact I've had with him since I left. All right. Tell him to tell you first you're sorry, and then, vive le sport! <laughs> I know the best Brussels in Paris. Maybe it's lucky you waited so long. Taxi! Taxi! Sans Rue de Sapin! No, 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 Rue de Seine. Come on, Indy. You'll enjoy your father's dear friends so much more after you have had a nice, plump, beautiful woman. Remy, I told you, they're expecting me. I'm already four hours late. Besides, my father asked Professor Levi to ask me to stay with him when I got to Paris. My father, he just wants to know if I'm all right. It's his way of communicating with me. Asking your friend to check up on you is exactly communicating with you. I'll get out of it. I'll think of something. Let them know I'm all right, then figure a way to leave. That's the right idea. I keep the girls warmed up and waiting for you. Rude to say? Okay, Remy, I'll talk my way out of this and meet you tomorrow. We'll meet at restaurant Chaudu at six. Allons-y! Your father writes, when he has his next leave, he will surely go to Paris. As a cultural center, it is too good to miss. And he continues, war is a fool's game. If he hasn't already figured this out, have faith that he soon will. Any help you may give him in extracting himself from his obligations will be greatly appreciated by me. But you I may inform him that I greatly encourage him to renew his educational pursuits at the university of his choice. He need no longer concern himself about my view in this matter. I don't have to go to Princeton? Thank you, my dear friend, for your kindness in helping with this most difficult personal conflict with great appreciation. What reply shall I pass on to him? Well, I'm surprised that he gave up on Princeton. I am grateful for his concern, and I'm fully aware of the insanities of war, but I... I cannot abandon my duties here. I'm sorry, I... I'm sure he will be, too. I'm sure he will be relieved to know you are so healthy. Oh, oh I'm sorry. I'm please. sorry. I, I Don't worry. This, I get it. It's all I'm right. Really, I'm sorry. It's all right. Please. In any case, 
We have such a marvelous week planned for you. Tomorrow, a marvelous lecture at the Ministry of Science. And then a tea filled with all sorts of exciting, marvelous people, including the Minister of Agriculture. Well, it sounds just marvelous. But I must tell you, the truth of it is, I've been given a special assignment, and I have to stay with the Belgian corporal with whom I'll be working. I'll try to spend as much time with you as I can, but unfortunately, I'll have to spend most of my time studying the ins and outs of this assignment. Oh, worry, what a shame. We were so looking forward to your staying with us. I'm afraid I've been told to barrack near the flea market. And we were so wanting to show you our Paris. Well, my dear, it is war time, you know. But at least you will do us the honor of accompanying us this evening to a special gathering. It's a birthday party. For the undersecretary to the minister of war. He'll be 65. Extraordinary that he is 65. He doesn't look a day over 60. He bikes every day. Oh, worry. You simply must come. Permit us to tell your father we spent at least one evening with you. They always have a wonderful tropical fruit punch. Well, it sounds just swell. Of course, I'd love to join you. Well, of course, it's different get fruit at this time of year. Any kind of fruit. Yes, well, and especially now. Yes, there is a war on. Don't you agree? Yes, there is a war on. Oh, but you can still get lovely figs at the south end of Wood of Well, we can't expect to get... Who's that woman over there? My darling. That, my dear Henri, is the infamous Mata Ari. She is a scandalous so-called performer. She's an artistic dancer, my love. Dancer, my eye. She prances around, taking off her clothes. I hardly call that artistic. Well, in some sophisticated circles, her art. Have you ever seen her dance, my boy? She's quite impressive. No, but I've seen her picture on postcards. She's much more beautiful in person. Young man, I strongly advise you against getting involved with women like that. Wherever soldiers go, women like that seem to follow. Ah, Your Excellency, here you are. Happy birthday. May I present our young friend? Henri Defense. Just returned from the front, a Belgian patriot of American origins. How do you do, sir? A great pleasure, Corporal Defense. May I introduce my dear friend, Madame Mata Ali? My pleasure, madam. And mine. I, I don't know if I like museums very much. I mean, it's just so long I can stay looking at a picture. I marvel at people who stand looking at a canvas Marshall, for hours please, as though they're finding some new bit of truth. I don't know. There are some pieces I could look at for days. Only because he is scantily clad and reveals some tantalizing bit of anatomy. Have you been to the Louvre yet? Uh, many times. Remarkable. Reading a book at a party. Oh, no, I've, um... Come on, read me something. It's in Greek. Read it to me. Well, first in Greek, then in English. Eithea Artemis strategi keto apo tin apsida. Laus mini apotufos tu fingario. The goddess Artemis stood under the archways, the moonlight shining above her. It loses a little something in the translation. And how do I know that's what he says? You could be lying to me. Why would I do that? 
to impress me. How am I doing? A young, handsome man with no brass, no braids. Seems slightly out of place here. No more than the goddess Diana walking among the mortals. I've seen the palace dancers of Raj and Punjab, and they don't compare to your extraordinary gift. <laughs> You've seen me dance? Well, of course. I, I was captivated. I'm flattered. Which dance did you see? Oh, the one with the veils. The veils? Well, it, it was something like veils anyway. I, I was captivated. You look hungry. Have you eaten? No, not really. They have a most extraordinary chef at my hotel. He makes a souffle. It's as light and sweet as uh, your flattery. Will you join me for dinner? I insist. What about your undersecretary to the Minister of War? Oh, yes, well. I must go on from here with my friends to another engagement. But I'll see you back at my hotel at, say, 11 o'clock. All right. Swell. Perhaps I'll have something Greek there for you to read. Or French. Perhaps. Okay. I mean, as well. <laughs> Oui, monsieur. Henry Dufont for Madame Hari. Ah, yes. You're her nephew, I believe. One moment, Monsieur Dufont. Yes, yes. Uh, Madame telephoned to say you were coming and has instructed us to have you wait in her room. Front, uh, please escort Monsieur Dufont to suite 24. Thank you, monsieur. Yeah? Who was that? Uh, Monsieur Henri Defense, a nephew to Madame Madhari. by the smell of exotic spices that fill the warm night air. Mmm, till I stumbled and I found myself sprawled in front of the master, Yogi Bujum. He seemed to be so furious that he was unable to speak. He dragged me by the hair to the holy residence where I was sure I was going to be beaten and most likely expelled. Why didn't you run away? Well, it was my teacher, and I was very young. His power over me was very, very strong. Well? Well, what? Well, what happened? <laughs> he threw me onto the floor, 
and proceeded to take his clothes off. I was mortified. I ran away and never returned. Later I heard he quit the order and went to work making moving pictures in Singapore. When I was fighting in the Mexican Revolution, there was a Japanese cameraman there from Singapore. Mm. Maybe that was him. Mm -hmm. It seems men always take advantage of women. Why is that? I can certainly see what is with you. You are truly beautiful. Thank you. But so often men are old, vulgar, and unattractive. Then it can be so distasteful. Mm. On the other hand, men can be young, attractive, charming, and can be... What? Can make it very difficult to say no. <laughs> and what would make it impossible to say no? A sudden feeling of touch. Like this? That's the touch. Well? I am... What? This. This is how you feel to me. So alive, so full of possibilities, so untouched by. I mean, you don't seem to have been brutalized by all this horrible fighting. It's a slaughter. We've had so many killed. The Germans don't know how weak our lines are. A smart boy like you should transfer to Africa. I hear that the war is much safer there. I think it's much safer right here in your bed. Only for you, I think. to walk in Paris with you. Or it seems like a lifetime ago. Well, that's good. I wonder if any of my friends were killed since I've been away. What a horrible thought. You must push all of that from your mind. Imagine that the war doesn't exist. But what good would that do? That's a lie. What's true is what's happening now. On this park bench between us. For all we know, the war could have ended and we just haven't heard about it. What is it? Is something the matter? No, nothing. I, I'm feeling wonderful. Is that all? difficult to put into words. Tell me. Tell me you love me. Okay, I love you. <laughs> love you too. <laughs> the war isn't everywhere. There is still beauty in this world.
Here, people are striving to create, not destroy. I love that. Not death and destruction, but beauty, not ugliness. I would love to do something like this, to create something people will remember, look at, and talk about. That's why I dance, to make a little something. I love, I love life. <laughs> Do you think they love each other? I don't know. I think everyone here loves one another. How do you know for certain? Ah, because it is a life class, and that's what a life class is for. I do love you. Stay with me this evening. Time passes so quickly with you. I want to stay. I want to, believe me. But I must attend this little dinner party this evening. After dinner, then? After dinner, definitely. Hey, don't look so sad. It's not so long. Miss you. Hey, where have you been? Sorry, I got here as quickly as I could. Indy, this is Geneviève. This is Colette. This is my great friend, Indy. <laughs> <laughs> One small cup of soup, please. So you weren't able to get away from your father's boring friends? Uh, things made it more difficult for me to get away than I first thought. You must sidestep these obligations of yours. Life is passing you by. <laughs> Looks like it hit you in the face. I was dancing on the piano. <laughs> on top of the piano. Yes, but it didn't last. You took away our beautiful music. You <laughs> Whoa. Sounds like the hallmark of a pretty grand party. You have got to get away. I'm trying, but it's not going to be easy. Besides, I'm having a pretty good time. Good time doing what? Well, shopping, I guess. Mon <laughs> Dieu. Watching the boats down by the river. <laughs> feeding the birds. Boy, what has happened to you since yesterday? You're having a great time feeding the birds? <laughs> He's fallen in love. No, no, I... Look in his eyes. I've seen that look many times. Mm, that glow. Mm. <laughs> you fell in love again? No, not exactly. I mean, it's not like it was with Vicky. I'm not really in love. He's in heat. <laughs> <laughs> Who is she? What is she like? She's incredible. They all are. What else? Incredible is enough for the moment. Too bad that moment doesn't last. Hope I'm not late. Hello? Hello? My gorgeous one, with all my love, Count von Klaus. I lost all track of time. I hope you forgive me. It's dawn. Where in blazes have you been? I'm sorry, but it was simply dreadful. A horrible evening, and I 
couldn't get away. You said 11. It's now 6 o'clock in the morning. Indy, please don't be angry with me. I'm so tired. Who are you with? That is none of your business. We've been on each other 48 hours. I hardly think that entitles you to come in here and try to take over my life. You're taking over my life. I've been hanging around here for eight hours waiting for you. Then let's not waste more time arguing. Come on, don't be a bully. Come here, forgive me. I'm not being a bully. You're cute when you're angry. Don't say that. Puppies are cute. What should I say then? How can you ask me to spend the night with you and then you go off and spend the night with someone else? You can't expect me to drop everything for you. Don't you see how unreasonable that is? I'm being unreasonable? I had such an unpleasant night. You know I wanted to be with you. The only way I got through the evening was knowing at the end of it I could see you. Oh, you're spoiling it. Don't be this way. Don't be mean. I'm not. I... N not what? I don't, I don't remember. I need your help today. How? I have been forced to move out of my country house. Such a dreadful, depressing ordeal. And I have to put all my things in storage. Oh, my dashing young corporal. Won't you help a dancer in distress? How can anyone say no to you? So manage. I love my house. It's so charming. Why are you giving it up then? I couldn't afford it now. It's far too expensive to maintain. seem a little distant at first, maybe severe, no, intimidating. I guess people find my father intimidating, but we're actually quite close. Oh, you're lucky. My father and I never really understood each other. She looks just like you. Well, perhaps because it is me. I thought you grew up in Java. I couldn't have said that. Somehow you must have got the wrong impression. Marguerite. You changed your name. <laughs> I've changed a lot. I never understood why people change their names. It's a redifference. Your real name? Not exactly. When I lived in Java, they called me Matahari. It means eye of the day. And in my mind, they suited me more than Margaret. Margaret is the name of someone who would lead a quite ordinary life in Holland. But Matahari. Matahari is the name of someone who would travel the world and have royalty sit at her feet. You are a very nice young man. You have a lot of friends. Oh, this. 
These are the friend of my past. And you are the friend of my present. Your only friend? Oh, my special friend. In this moment, you are the most important person in my life. How long is this moment going to last? I don't know. I'm a dancer. <laughs> Not a fortune teller. Are these your costumes? Yes. Doesn't look like it covers much. You never really did see me dance, did you? Well, actually, no. I didn't think so. under the window for some records. Put one on. the movers get all the things in the other bedroom too. I have to run. Why? Where, where are you going? Oh, a couple of errands. Where? With who? It won't be long, my love. I'll meet you back at the hotel. Don't forget, I'm taking you to a wonderful little cafe tonight. Yes, I was wondering if you could tell me where La Femme is. Hello. 
Sounded like a little dog. I guess it was nothing. Certainly nothing that will disturb us. Come here. <laughs> Defense. That's a strange name. You're American, are you not? Yes, sir, I am. You also go by the name of Henry Jones Jr. Yes, I do. Is it the name of Indiana Jones? And also Indiana Jones? Yes, sir. That's a very odd name. Why aren't you using your real name? What are you hiding? Nothing. It says here that you're a Belgian. Did you lie about that? Do you realize how much trouble you're in? I guess not. Would it surprise you that I suspect you of being a spy? You fait un peu jeune pour 22 ans, no? Your record shows that you're 22 years of age. Is that true? You seem a very young 22. The rigors of war must agree with you. In the past few days, it seems you've been spending a lot of time with a woman called Mata Hari. Is that not true? I said, is that not true? Speak up, Corporal Defons. This is a serious situation you're in. Have you been spending a lot of time with this dancer, Matahari? Yes, I have. Have you discussed with her any details of your actions at the front? No. Did you tell her anything about our troop strength? No. Has she discussed with you any of her knowledge of military operations? No. Has she asked you to do any favors? No. When in her company, have you noticed any Hello? correspondence? Mais enfin, je vous l'ai déjà dit. Margaret Taylor, c'est le vrai nom de Matahari. Hey, what is all this anyway? Continue the surveillance. I'm not at liberty to say. My advice to you, young man, is to stay away from this dancer friend of yours. Forgive me, sir, but I really don't think it's your place to tell me who I can and cannot see. Take him away. Corporal 
Jones, your leave has been cancelled. You have exactly 24 hours to get back to your unit. What? You can't cancel my leave. We just did. And if you're not careful, your situation could get much worse. You're dismissed. something happened to me or that I was with somebody else? Were you with somebody else? I was in jail. They said I was a spy. I thought I was going to face a firing squad. What? How did this all happen? I was taken in and questioned. By whom? The police. They think you're a spy for the Germans. Oh, that's ridiculous. Why do they get these absurd ideas? Maybe because you're sleeping with the Minister of War for a start. How dare you? You've been following me. Yeah, well, I'm not the only one. The police have been watching you, too. Oh, please, I know that. They're thinking that I'm a spy is perfectly ridiculous. This is serious. You're in a lot of danger. Huh. I have too many Prince Charmings in high places for anything to come of it. It's precisely because you have so many friends in high places that something will come of it. I could be a spy if I wanted. But I'm not. I make more money dancing. I can't believe you kissed that old goat. How could you say you love me and not trust me? You've been lying to me. You don't love me. You've just been using me for your own vanity. When you said you loved me, was that true? I mean, really true from your heart? Well, no, not exactly. So you've been lying to me. And that's all right for you, not for me? And why did you tell me if it wasn't true? Because it's what you wanted to hear. And it's not as if I don't care about you, I do. What you care about is the pleasure I give you. I'm so much older than you. I've had so many lovers. And what would be the point of telling you this? I like you, and I don't want to make you unhappy. If you wanted it to be so wonderful, why couldn't you have waited till after I'd gone to sleep with him? I never promised you anything. You haven't any claim on my fidelity or my life when we're not together. I thought what we had was special special until you destroyed it by following me you left me here to rot while you went and had a rendezvous with the minister of war who's married just an old friend yeah very old and very rich it's not that old yeah but i guess it pays the rent right i will not be judged by a jealous little child your life is a lie an exotic dancer from java you're nothing but a prostitute Nothing but a sad little boy masquerading as a man. Your life is filled with deceptions, little boy. You're plain soldier. You're plain lover. You're plain the self-respecting, jealous husband. But you're just plain. You're too young to know what you're doing. And at the end, you're just a sad little fool. They're sending me back to the front in the morning. Huh. Sorry. Sorry, too. Why don't we just sell ourselves our illusions? Life is a little bit easier if we don't always look at the hard truth. 